Okay, so what are we into today? Well, we're back into this little 15-foot uh, comp hydro stream. Uh, we've gotten quite a bit done on the rigging since the last video. Um, we, uh, you know, what I think one of the most interesting things we did on this is we adapted uh, Uflex blinker trim to fit a Sea Star Pro helm. And also, uh, we're going to hold another gauge as part of this process. This is going to be this is going to be speedometer. Once we get it mounted, we don't have the right hardware figured out yet. But that's the that's going to be a speedometer. And the way we did this is um, so the stock Sea Star helm has this retaining washer right on the face that uh, holds the front seal in place and um, Sea Star blinker trim aka T and H marine pro trim both you pull these screws out and you attach to those same three mounting holes so we decided well I mean if they're gonna do that why can't we do that so we um, made a number of 3d printed iterations of what we were gonna try trying to figure out you know what width we were gonna need and then you know how we were gonna mount the gauge we tried different amounts of offset in the gauge um, and a bunch of different thicknesses and then uh, after we got a good prototype piece which I think this was actually the good prototype piece then we mocked everything up and then uh, we sent the digital file to a shop, to a job shop, and they uh, they cut the cut us a chunk of three sixteenths aluminum with a laser, and then just we just bent these we just bent these two tabs in a break to hold the gauge. And uh, you know it's not one hundred percent perfect. It's the first one we ever made, but I've never seen anybody do this before, and it does make for a really nice, neat setup. You know, I don't, I gotta tell you, I really don't like blinker trim. The ergonomics are weird on your fingers. And on this setup with an offset, you know, the blinkers are way in here. They're hard to reach. And especially because this boat it gets run a lot by kids. They're just totally dysfunctional in terms of them keeping their hands on the wheel. So uh, I think this turned out really good. We we're going to come back and we we're going to get some black wire. And we're going to replace this wire with some black so that it'll just sort of blends in. You won't even see it then. I don't know why Uflex is using this crazy gray wire, but that's what comes with them right now. So we're going to switch that out. But, uh, you know, that turned out really, really well. That's going to be really a, a, a sort of an interesting, unique addition to this boat um, and you can see as you as you change the angle on it it actually lines up just about perfect with that steering wheel you can uh, it's really it's really easy to grab and uh, I think it's gonna be really safe um, the other things that we got done we we you know we were bending a bunch of plates at one point we bent a plate for the just amount of control box I tried to get rowboat to sell me a floor mount shifter but um he didn't respond for like i don't even know how long and so we ended up just doing this so because it's getting too late in the year to mess around anymore uh we maybe go to some some key switch and uh aluminum shifter at some point but we just threw this control box in here for now we did get the the uh slide throttle setup put in okay so the slide throttle setup sorry there we got interrupted uh i think that's gonna work really good uh kids of varying heights we can just pull that throttle back as we need it so they can still reach the accelerator the seat is the seat is on a uh the seat's on a slider too so we can move the seat so between those two between those two we're thinking we can um accommodate any kid that's going to be of an age where we're going to let them drive this thing um we got the battery in a box we're just using a, a big four stroke watercraft agm battery and, and you can buy these little atwood boxes now um we don't really know where we're going to need the gas tank 
for this setup so the gas tank is just totally temporarily strapped in place while we figure out CG on this thing um, we've got the we did get a plate made and the oil injection tank is also happily residing over there to be perfectly fine there and both the both the battery and the oil injection tank um, the plates were made so they can slide up and down the stringers if we would need to, if we decide that the weight's really wacky and we, you know, we've got to make some, all change everything we can. Um, we, we got this, we got this 20 inch midsection motor put together. Um, that's, <laughs> we're going to run it with, like we said, we're going to run it with these 337, 540, I think they're eight these bathtub cylinder heads and so right now this lower chamber is huge it's got 85 pounds of compression it's got 89 and 92 and this is a good tight motor with less than 10 percent leak so it's just a huge huge chamber on this thing right now but we thought it would be interesting to um you know start out with the lowest compression cylinder head that omc ever offered and then you know step through them one at a time and just sort of show people what what the various options are for adding compression and what the effects are so uh we've got just a couple of things left to do and uh, then we're going to take this thing and splash it in the lake and run it around a little and uh get a feel for what this setup is if we're way too high if we're not um and then we'll come back and make another video uh on the uh, some of our initial impressions after we run it um that's what we're into today at the lake <laughs> 